What's up guys, Joe Eves here with another awesome tutorial. I'm gonna show you how to track text. Also gonna show you how to turn text into a 3D object so that it is a 3D looking text. So let's get started. All right guys, so let's go ahead and get started on this project. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new composition and then track that composition. So I'm just going to click on this beach house MOV. I'm going to click and drag it over the new composition and it will create a new composition for me. So now that I have this new composition, if I go ahead and space, you can see here is the footage. I'm going to put the 3D text or the text rather right here and then turn it to 3D. So that is the tracking that we're going to need to do. In order to track, we're going to need to make sure that we have our tracker window open. So we're going to make sure we go to window and make sure that tracker is selected. Tracker is selected so I can see it over here and I'm going to go ahead and track camera. So I'm going to click on track camera. Now this, depending on your processor and um, your computer speed, and how long the clip is and how big the clip is, this may take a few minutes. So it has analyzing in background, step one of two. So what it's going to do first is it's going to analyze everything. And if you look up here, it has 3D camera tracker, and then it has one of 231 frames that it's going to track. Right now it's bumping up higher because now it's actually analyzing everything and if you move your cursor off of it it will give you how many frames are left if you move it it'll go back and forth for how many seconds or minutes or hours it needs so this one's just about done once it's done it's actually going to take another few minutes to solve the camera and what that means is it's going to take that 3D tracking information and they're going to create a camera for that so you can track things in 3D space. So that takes another few minutes depending on how big your clip is and how long it is, all of that kind of stuff. But once that's done, this will actually change and you'll see a bunch of tracker points all over the footage. So now you see all of these tracker points and I'll zoom in here a little bit. You can see all these tracker points. If they're too small, you can actually go over and have the track point size and you can make it bigger. So if you can't see it, you can make it bigger. And then there's a target size. If that's too big, then you can shrink it down. So you can kind of see, depending on how your text, how big your, you want your text and stuff. So I'm actually gonna keep this at about 100% just because that's a good size for the text that I'm going to do. So now what I'm doing is I'm trying to I'm going to make it a little smaller. I'm going to try to find some text, like some points that are flat with my footage here. And I'm trying to keep it so that the, when the text is laid out, it lays out flat. That actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and then I'm gonna create text and camera. By clicking create text and camera, we now have text there. So now there's some text there, we're gonna change it to 3D. If you wanna highlight it, you can triple click the text down here and it will highlight the text. So we have that and we're gonna just put for, we'll do it in all caps, for sale. All right, and maybe that's what it is, is it's for sale. Now it's, now it's pretty big, so we're gonna twirl this down and we're gonna go hit, make sure this is selected, hit S on the keyboard for scale, and I'm gonna scale it down. All right, I'm gonna make this a little smaller. Now, I'm gonna rotate it. So I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna make sure I'm on this layer and I'm gonna click R for or orientation X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation. This is actually a 3D object now. So if I move that, that's gonna move it, the orientation that way, then it's gonna move the orientation that way, which is in 3D space. And then if I move it this way, it moves it there. 
So I'm just gonna try, and then you can lean it up, back or down, all of those kind of things. Now, for if you don't like how the layer is, then you may have to choose a different spot for the targeting, but it's with 3D, you can move it pretty easy. So you can see that is um, pretty good. So now if we were to just play it, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. Let's just play it. You can see that it is staying on the target. So it doesn't move. Let me drop this down just a little bit so it can render a little faster. And as you can see, it's not going anywhere. It's stuck right to that place I put it. And then you may want to scrub through it to find it and to see if that works, but that looks pretty good. So there you go, for cell, and it stays there. So that's pretty easy, looks good. And if you didn't want to do 3D text, then you could be done right now. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it into 3D text. We're also going to, if you look in here, there's no shadow. So let's add a shadow. Um, so in order to do that, we're gonna duplicate this layer, Command D to duplicate the layer. And then we're gonna hit the R again for the rotation. And as you can see, that's the rotation. So we're gonna just drop it down so that it is flat. And we'll just kind of mess with it until we get the rotation that we want. And I'm going to bring this back up to full res resolution so I can see. And I'm going to push it back just a little bit. And it's kind of hard to see. The other thing is you want to put it underneath this one because you want it on top. Now that I have that selected, I'm going to find my character palette which is right here, and I'm gonna click on black. So now you can see the black is there. It looks pretty good. But what I wanna do is I wanna adjust this just a little bit more to line up a little bit better. So, and it's still not quite where I want it. So make sure you're on the right one and that looks pretty good now we just need to maybe plop it down a little bit more maybe about right there you can also if you need to move these you can move them up and back in 3d space if you need to move it over you can click on hold, hover over till you see the x value and then you can drag it that way as well so depending on where you want your shadow to be. And then Z moves it back in Z space and Y moves it a little bit farther out. So it actually looks okay. So now what we're gonna do, and we may have to adjust it because when we go back, let's see. So we're gonna go ahead and just try it. And yep, that looks pretty good, but it looks kind of not really like a shadow because it's too dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit, click on the layer that I wanna change, and then I'm gonna hit T for opacity, and I'm gonna drop that down just a little bit so that it's transparent and you can see the shadow. So now there's a shadow there, which is awesome. So there you go, that's how you do it. Now, if you were just doing this, you know, 2D, maybe you were you would change the color to like a white, you know, kind of stands out a little bit more like that. Okay, but let's go ahead and turn this into a 3D text now. So in order to turn it into a 3D text, we need to actually add some light because the light will help us make this look 3D. So. In order to do that, we're going to go up to Layer, New, and we're going to find a light. Layer, New, Light. This light 
will have as an ambient light and the 80% is good enough for and you can see that kind of darkened everything. Now we'll go ahead and do a new light. So we're gonna add another light, which this one will be a spotlight. So we're gonna do layer new, and we're gonna do light again, and we're gonna change this from ambient to spotlight, and that looks all pretty good for now. So we'll go ahead and do the spotlight. So now we actually have a 3D light that we can move around and you can see it's it's actually it's actually light so this light source is that spotlight so you can bring it in closer you can move it around but now what we want to do is we want to twirl down this first layer for cell transformation and then it has geometry options and we're going to do extrusion depth this is how you make something look 3D. So we're just adding that extrusion and you could go pretty far out to make it, you know, pretty 3D, but we'll go about right there. And you, you just mess with it. If you want more of a bevel, make it bigger, want less bevel style. You could change the styles to see what kind of a bevel you'd like. There's all different stuff you can kind of mess with. I actually just leave it as none because I think it looks better. But now if we zoom in here, you can see that that looks more like 3D. So now we've done that. We have a 3D text, but what we need to do is we need to push this shadow just a little bit. So like if you didn't want it right there and you wanted to move it somewhere else, you could you could move this text. Okay. And so and it'll stay with that tracking. So we have the tracking there, it's not really going to move. Obviously, it's covering the house, which is what you maybe don't want to do but you can adjust it and move it around. So it's staying pretty still. I'm gonna go ahead and push it back down. I kind of liked it right there along the ocean. And there you go. That is how you create it.